Ja, okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you guys what life was like after being diagnosed with gastroparesis. As you all know, August is gastroparesis awareness month. That's why I'm kind well, that's why I'm wearing green, if you can see. So after being diagnosed with gastroparesis, I honestly I hated life. At the time, I didn't know how I was going to bounce back from such devastating news, trying to accept a new lifestyle. It was, it was different and I wasn't ready to adapt to all the changes and all the necessary medications and everything that I had to do. I thought my life and freedom was over. I, it felt like it was snatched from me again. All I heard was, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. It was tiring, it was annoying, frustrating, and it weighed me down. My life was put on hold. Everything I had planned was put on hold. There were days that I completely gave up because, again, I didn't want to accept the new life. I didn't feel I needed to because I didn't know why this was happening to me. I was still young. I wanted to be free. I wanted to live my life. I went from weighing 170 pounds, dropping at my lowest to 85 pounds. I was disgusted. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed of my appearance. I literally shut myself down from the world, from life, tried to shut myself down from my doctors, my mom. It was just... It was new to me. It was just, it was different. At the time, I tried my best to monitor my diabetes. And I did not whatsoever monitor my gastroparesis. As in monitor, I mean like watch the food that I eat, watch what I drink. Just basically watch everything that was necessary to control my gastroparesis. I was still eating as if I was never diagnosed with gastroparesis. I loved all the foods that was harmful to my body. And pretty much I did not want to give give them up. I loved oxtail, chicken alfredo, ribs, steak. All those foods were like so dear to my heart. And it literally broke my heart when I had to just completely eliminate them from my diet. It was like, what? Like oxtail? Chicken alfredo? Steak? Seriously? Like, and there is going to be a way that I create chicken alfredo. That is gastroparesis safe. Trust me, I'm, I'm going to do it. Don't doubt me. I'm going to do it. Fried pork chops. What? You kidding me? And after I would eat it a day or so, maybe a few hours later, I would end up back in the hospital. Discharge, eat whatever, back in the hospital. Discharge, back home, eat whatever, back in the hospital. Like, all of that going back and forth to the hospital, back and forth to the hospital, it was it was tiring. It was just annoying. I just kept seeing myself getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Then I shut down some more, and then I was just mad at life. But looking back at it now, in the position I am in now, I couldn't be mad at life because I was putting myself in that situation by eating things that I should not have been eating. So it was, yes, it was a lesson learned, but I've grown, I've matured, and I can only be mad at myself. But again, I don't regret any of the wrongdoings that I've done because I'm here now, happy, healthy, and at peace. But anyway, you know how you always hear somebody say, don't worry, you're going to get better, you're going to get better. And I would just look at them like, 
how sway like when when is it going to get better like at a point in time i couldn't even eat ice chips i would just throw up i couldn't even drink water i would just vomit if i smelled a certain type of food i would just vomit so i was just like why why are you telling me this is going to get better cuz the way i am right now i don't see nothing getting better but that was just me being negative all the time i had a negative or I had a dark cloud over me. I would just like negative, miserable Molly, just mad at life, mad at the world. And there were a few times that I passed out at home, passed out in the hospital, and I was just like, wow. Because there was nothing in my body, no nourishment, no nothing for me to survive on. It was just IV fluids and the... TPN, feed tubes, feed tubes, tube feedings, like I was, that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough for me to survive on. I asked myself, I was like, what is this? This, this can't, this can't be real. Like I, I have to do something about it. Like I can't go on living my life like this. And then that's when I started to be more optimistic, it was trial and error, process of elimination. First was the food. I had to eliminate the foods. I stopped eating beef and pork. And then as time went on, I followed the three-time rule. You know, I would still eat sandwiches with turkey and mayo. And I noticed that every time that I ate a sandwich, I would vomit. So then I eliminated the turkey. My surgeon said if I eat something three times and I vomit, just eliminate out the diet. So I gave up turkey and then I started eating chicken, boiled head chicken sandwiches. And I was still vomiting. So I'm like, so it must be the mayo. I didn't even try to eat turkey with mustard. I just completely cut out the um, turkey. Then I cut out the mayo. Then I started having chicken sandwiches with spicy mustard. And that, that agreed with me. So I was good with that. Then I eliminated cabbage, broccoli, corn, beans, a few other things. I just had to completely eliminate them from my diet because it wasn't worth the pain and the misery. Like, I was tired of being stuck like a pincushion. I'm a really hard stick, and as you can see here, I still have a bruise on my neck from IVs and I think I have one somewhere on this somewhere over here yeah and so my arms are still bruised my hands are st I still have marks because I'm such a hard stick I had to get pick lines mid lines secondly I had to shed some light into my own life I started reading very inspirational books thirdly I had to accept the new lifestyle before connecting with God because I felt like I can't connect with God and I keep asking him why, why me, why this, why now. So I, once I accepted, you know, the goods, the bads, the trials, the tribulations with gastroparesis, then I moved on to connecting with God. And once I connected with him, the new feeling, I felt new, I felt good, I was very more optimistic, I was calm, I just let things flow let things pass by i don't take things personal anymore then fourthly after connect is that a word <laughs> then after connecting with him i asked him re to remove all toxic things from my life and that includes family and friends nothing if it wasn't bringing light positivity into my life i asked him to remove all things negative, all things toxic, all things that weighed me down. And after that, I stopped looking at social media because I would, you know, catch myself looking at social media and I would get depressed, I would get sad, like, I'm not where I want to be, why is that person doing this, why is that person doing that, and I'm just stuck laid up here. So, And then when you, when you compare your life to others, it's just like... Why am I minding their business that does not pay me? And it's like, this is my gift, 
my journey, my story, what's for me is going to be for me. It won't miss me. That's God's gift to me. And even now, like when I hashtag like gastroparesis, gastroparesis awareness or diabetes, you just see so many negative mean so many negative comments and it's just like you have to stop being so negative nothing good is going to come into your life by being negative you are blocking your blessings by being so negative you have to be more optimistic more positive you just let life be stop questioning life this is your gift and trust me is What's yours is going to come to you is not going to miss you. And I'm a firm believer in that. And another major thing that I do is I avoid the sun as much as possible. Like, if I know I'm going to be in the sun, well, not going to be. If I know I'm going out in the daytime, I just try to avoid the sun as much as possible. I drink lots of water. I stay hydrated. I try to find as much shade as possible. Like even if I go out with my mom or my friends, I just avoid the sun. I find a spot with shade and I'm good. I'm not sure how that's going to work out when I move to California. That's a goal that I have that I want to move to California. The sun is not your friend. The sun is harmful and the sun will get you in trouble. The sun is like an invisible flare up. You be in the sun too long, next thing you know. Well, for me, it is. If I'm in the sun too long, my stomach starts cramping and I just feel weird and I'm like oh damn flare up is coming for me flare ups is different like if I vomit once it is gonna keep coming keep coming keep coming it's not gonna stop so a tip that I can share with you is when I feel nauseous or I feel like a flare up coming I eat something really salty and if I'm not in a mood to eat I put a sprinkle of salt on my t the tip like the tip of my tongue I'll put salt and I'll just close my mouth and just breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out like the other day for instance I woke up extremely nauseous and I had an attitude I'm like why am I nauseous what's going on <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I made some eggs, and I made them extremely salty. I laid in the AC, and I drank lots of water. And I also took an Ativan, and I, I was I chilled. And I, after that seized a little bit, I cooked, I moved around. One thing I can say is when you're nauseous, Try to be active. Take your mind off the nausea, if that makes sense. Just take your mind off what you're going through. To where I am today, it was not easy. And I'm the type of person that I, now I am, before I wasn't. I speak everything into existence. I, I'm more optimistic. Also signed out of all social media accounts because I wasn't ready for that step yet, I needed to focus on me, focus on my health. I wanted to stay loyal to me, my vision, my journey, and always reminding myself what's for me will not miss me. And when I'm feeling good, my blood sugars are good, I would like occasionally treat myself to a coffee with soy milk or almond milk. My stomach can't tolerate whole milk. I'm not really an ice cream person. If I do, eat ice cream is maybe like a like a bite size but I'm not really much of an ice cream person if I have like a cupcake instead of wiping the top off I would just turn the cupcake upside down and just eat it from the bottom and then when I see the icing peeking through I'll just stop I don't like I'm not a sweet person I'm not only if I'm low I want some sour patch watermelon but like icing on cake I don't I don't like it and through it all I look back and say wow like wow when I look at pictures from then and now I'm just like 
I, I get teary, I get emotional. Like when I share my story with others and I tell them like, you know, I've been in the hospital t almost three years, two and a half to three years, I was consistently in the hospital. And they look at me like I'm crazy and I, I'll show them pictures. I'll tell them to look at my Instagram, my YouTube. And like I get emotional, like I get choked up because it's, it's important to me to stick to my mission and my vision because we all deserve the life that we want to live. It might not go as planned. It might not happen when we want it to happen, but it's going to happen. You just have to go through the rough patch. Everyone's journey, they assume their journey is going to be like this. You got a rude awakening. Your journey, listen, you're going to go up, down, back, forth, side to side, left, right. It's not going to come easy. No challenge is ever going to be easy. You have to remember this battle is not ours. It's God's. He picked the right soldiers to fight for him. And that's what it is. I've gained my weight back. I am able to maintain my weight. My skin is almost back to where it needs to be. When I was diagnosed with gastroparesis, I almost went like a whole year without moving my bowels. So my skin went crazy. Like, oh my God. I, <laughs> I will do a skin how I cleared my acne I would say but it was it was cystic scaracious that's not a word but it was it was crazy I would not look at anyone I would not go outside if I would go to a doctor's appointment I would just look down because I was yeah it was crazy and long story short everyone deserves to live their life with happiness joy and laughter I feel good. I'm happy. I'm at peace with my health. Se September 9th will mark my one year anniversary of being out of the hospital. Um, I have my positive surroundings, my mom to think of course, my amazing doctors, the most high, and just Staying positive, eating the right things, sticking to my blood sugar, sticking to my blood sugars, making sure my blood sugars are controlled, sticking to my medications that my doctors prescribed. When my skin is where it needs to be, I will do a giveaway on the products that got my that helped my skin get where it needs to be. Well, where I want it to be. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. But anyway, stay blessed, stay happy, stay healthy, do the right thing, follow your gut. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe, comment, like this video. Follow me on Instagram, the Fearless Butterfly on one. You can follow me on Facebook, the Fearless Butterfly. Bye guys, see you in the next video. Mwah.